to this presentation in which we are still addressing water systems for heating. This time we are going to consider the importance of temperature levels for the energy and resource efficiency of the heating system. In a previous lecture, we looked at the formula describing the heat exchange between a surface at a certain mean temperature and a room air Ti. Let's take the example of a room heated by an emitter in which hot water circulates. We assume we need 500 watt heating to keep the room at 20 degrees Celsius. Let's assume for the sake of demonstration that the convective surface of the radiator is twice the radiative one. The radiative one is just the flat surface facing the room. The convective coefficient is 2.5 watt per square meter Kelvin and the radiative coefficient is 5. The equation can therefore be rewritten as this. Two, uh, twice alpha C plus alpha R is 10, so we get this equation. This equation gives us some degrees of freedom. At constant heating capacity Q, we can compensate a lower mean temperature of the emitter by a larger surface A. So, we can choose many different combinations of radiator size A and average radiator temperature T emitter mean. In the first example, the radiator has a mean temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. The hot water will, for instance, enter the radiator at 90 degrees and leave it at 70. With this temperature, a radiator surface area of 0.83 square meter is needed. In the second example, the radiator has an average temperature of 60 degrees. That could be a supply temperature of 70 degrees and a return temperature of 50, leading to a surface area of 1.25 square meter. And in the last example, the radiator temperature is only 30 degrees on average, corresponding to a supply at 40 and a return at 20 degrees, leading to a surface of 5 square meter. So, the lower the temperature of the radiator, the higher the needed surface area. The temperature levels given here correspond to what we call high temperature cooling, medium temperature heating, sorry, and low temperature heating. In low temperature systems, in general, floor heating is applied in order to have enough heat exchange surface area. Although there is no strict definition of it, we consider emitters to be at a high temperature when the supply temperature is above 80 degrees Celsius and the return temperature above 60. In Europe, 90 supply and 70 degree return was quite standard in the past. 80, 60 is also common. You see on the picture a typical high temperature radiator. The problem with high temperature heating is that it cannot be achieved when using renewable energy, that is the subject of the MOOC energy supply in buildings. To achieve a supply temperature of 90, there is almost only one solution, and that is to use a boiler using fossil fuel or at the best biomass or biogas. With such a high temperature, the boiler cannot work in condensing mode and heat pumps, solar systems and low temperature geothermal energy are excluded. So that is not really future proof, unless a high temperature geothermal plant is available or industrial waste heat that could produce heat at 90 or 80 degrees. Burning biomass is possible too, however, there are doubts about the sustainability of biomass at large scale. There are, however, two interesting things about high temperature heating. The first one is comfort. In general, people love this high temperature source and most important in old, not well insulated buildings, it helps compensating for much too cold walls and windows during cold days. In short, it increases the mean radiant temperature MRT, especially if placed under cold windows. However, it may also increase radiant asymmetry 
and in very well insulated buildings, it could cause a too high MRT. A second advantage is the quick control possibilities. If you come home and switch the heating on, it will deliver immediately a lot of heat and that feels good. At the other side of the spectrum, we have low temperature heating, needing more surface area to provide the required heat. That is why in this case floor heating is used or even wall heating or in any case a large surface area of heating panels around the room. With such a low temperature at, at, at 35 degrees, we are very happy because renewable based energy supply can be used. Heat pumps will have a high efficiency at these temperature levels and solar and geothermal systems can be used. With the right surface area, whole needed heat can be supplied. But is it still comfortable? Well, people love warm walls and find floor heating very comfortable as long as the floor temperature is around 24 degrees Celsius, so that's good. However, the mean radiant temperature, MRT, should be kept in the right range too. That is where it can go wrong. If the building is not well insulated, the floor or wall heating will not be able to compensate for the cold walls and windows, leading to a low MRT. So, even if the needed heat as calculated with the heat balance is supplied, residents may feel very uncomfortable because the too low MRT. That is why it is strongly recommended to apply low temperature heating only in well insulated buildings. Another source of discomfort when applying low temperature floor heating may be the inertia of the system. If you feel cold and put the thermostat higher, it will cost a lot of time before the room air temperature increases. This is because of the mass of the floor and walls and a high share of radiative heat. So people have to get used to this. An appropriate zoning is also necessary to be able to control separately diverse rooms like living room and bedrooms. Otherwise, rooms may be unnecessarily heated. An alternative to floor heating is activated concrete, sometimes used in larger buildings. Instead of having floor heating on the above side of the concrete, water pipes are now placed inside the core of the concrete and hot water is circulated at an average temperature of 23 degrees. The supply is at 24 and the return at 22, for instance, so a very low temperature generator can be used. The concrete construction is therefore also at 23 degrees, which feels very comfortable. The system ensures a rather constant indoor climate and is able to deli deliver a basis heat load. It is however very slow, so in general an additional quicker system is used in combination. Observe that because warm air goes up, the convection coefficient at ceiling level is much low. Is at, sorry, at, at, at floor level is much higher than at ceiling level. And of course, between high and low temperature systems, everything in between is possible. In general, medium temperature is suitable in thermally renovated dwellings that do not achieve new built insulation levels and in buildings with a little bit of insulation. It enables the use of condensing boilers, which have a higher efficiency, but still consumes fossil fuels. It also allows for the use of ground source heat pumps and medium temperature geothermal sources. However, the efficiency of heat pumps will not be very high and solar thermal cannot be applied. From the comfort point of view, it is an interesting solution in buildings that cannot be insulated easily. In this lecture, we discussed the importance of the temperature levels of hydronic heating systems. Low temperature ones are very important to enable the use of renewables and to therefore reduce CO2 emissions. However, a minimum level of insulation is needed to ensure comfort. Medium temperature systems may provide an intermediate step towards more sustainability. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.